Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. So today we are doing my August highlights slash August favorites, which y'all know this is one of my favorite videos to film and I think it's one of your favorites to watch. So perfect. If you are new here, this is a video that I do every single month. I take you through my collection. I show you all the new leaves, blooms, general updates, just anything interesting that is going on with my plants. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel so that you don't miss any of my houseplant videos. I'm very excited to take you around to look at all the plants, but first I'm gonna give a huge shout out to today's sponsor. So today's sponsor is none other than Native. Now, if you've been on my channel for a while, then you know that I love Native. I've been using them for years and it is such a privilege whenever I get a chance to work with them. If you are not already familiar, I'm gonna tell you all about Native's plastic-free deodorants. I'm such a big fan. This packaging is made of paperboard. It's 100% plastic-free, so it's perfect if you, okay, my camera just, there we go. If you have been wanting to make a more sustainable swap, then I highly recommend checking these out. This is actually their new plastic-free packaging. This was their old, um, so you can see the difference. I think that this is so cute. It's a little bit shorter, so it's easier to push up, which I really like. The product works amazing. It is not sticky. It dries quickly. It comes in so many different scents. Um, actually, I will show you the scents that I most recently got stocked up on. So these two are actually my OGs. I've talked about them a lot before. Citrus and Herbal Musk is probably my absolute, well, th these are tied, honestly. And then I decided to pick up a scent that I don't think I've ever tried before, but I am enjoying it. This is the Lilac and White Tea. This is very floral. If you're into florals, fresh. This honestly it smells like I'm sitting in the garden or something. Really enjoying it. Native deodorants are aluminum-free, paraben-free, uh, cruelty-free, vegan, and they're made with simple ingredients like shea butter and coconut oil. If you've been wanting to try out Native deodorants, now is an awesome time to do so. They're offering you 33% off of your first Native plastic-free deodorant pack. This would normally be $39, but you'll be getting it for $26. Just click the link down below in the description box and make sure you use my code WILDFERN6. Thank you so much to Native for making today's video possible. Now let's check out the plant updates. Okay, I'm actually gonna start here in the kitchen because I just hauled this plant out to take a photo of it because you guys, she is growing so rapidly i it blows my mind i'm so excited to check on this plant every day i feel like i say that whenever i talk about it but truly there's so much growth progress every single day this is my monstera dubia by the way i didn't say that but um yeah this is my monstera dubia it's growing on a wooden plank i think this is cedar sometimes i get questions i think that this is cedar um i think i might actually make a whole video just like talking about this plant because i do get a lot of questions about like how it's attached and things like that so i might do that but yeah basically i think this plant is really underrated and it's just been such a joy to grow uh, so it started off as this little small one and just continued growing up. This is a second vine right here. And then the main one is on the right. Um, look at these aerials too. Like they're crazy. And that, oh, I don't want to disturb it. But yeah, so many roots. Um, yeah, just such a cool plant. And I'm so impressed with the size <laughs> lately. Like these leaves are really sizing up. I don't know how long it's going to be before I see fenestrations, but I will probably scream when I get some of those. If I do, I'm hoping that I do. I still have probably a couple feet of plank left, which is great because it gives this plant a lot of time and room to mature some more. Yeah, I cannot wait to see that new leaf. It's going to be nice. This leaf has not even hardened off yet. It might, might even expand a little bit more. That's just how quickly this grows. Like before the last leaf is hardened off, it already has another one that's going to unfurl. So it's just crazy. Okay, I'm not even going to lie. My room is such a hot mess right now. There's clothes all over the floor. The bed's not properly made. It's just, I have laundry. It's been a hectic time. But um, we're going to try to work around that. I think I'm going to start over here as usual. I don't even know if I have, oh, actually I do have one update over here um so my uh gosh i almost called this a philodendron my anthurium forgetii which has been on the struggle bus for quite a while still looks amazing like massive beautiful leaves she is putting out a new leaf which i actually had to free and i tried not to free it you guys like i really really tried to not take the tweezers to it but i just had to like it looked like it was gonna snap it really looked like it was gonna snap. I saw it, it looked like it was gonna snap. I left it for a full day and it still looked like it was gonna snap. I was misting it, I was doing all the things. 
and I just got too concerned so I, I freed it and now you know it's gonna grow but it might have I saw like one spot where I nicked it so hopefully it's not gonna be that bad but we'll see I'm excited for that to come out always a fun time when this plant is growing I was just cross my fingers and hope that one day I'm gonna get a nice leaf out of this thing it's my fault though it's my watering habits and then what else do we have here some things rooting this is actually a cutting from my nepenthes i didn't know if this would work it's just in water and i have it like secured so it stays in the water and i asked one of my plant friends the other day like is this a thing can i propagate by cutting and they suggested to use sphagnum moss so i think i'm gonna move this cutting to sphagnum moss and just cross my fingers i honestly have no idea if i'm ever gonna get roots from this but um it's a fun experiment we shall see also, speaking of Nepenthes, I'm thinking of ordering a couple more. There's actually a pretty cool carnivorous like plant nursery kind of near me. I don't think you can shop like at the store. I think you just can order online, but um, I'm thinking of picking up a couple from them. So I may be adding a couple of Nepenthes into my collection just because I want to learn more about them and just try out a couple of different varieties. Yeah, it's just something that I'm interested in, so... I might, I might have a couple new carnivorous friends to show you soon. Oh my goodness, okay. You have to see my sunflower. I can see it, it's outside. Okay, do you see that? How do I zoom on this camera? Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that I grew those from seeds. That is the cutest thing ever. They literally just opened yesterday. And I'm just like emotional whenever I see them. Holy smokes. Okay, back to the inside plants. Nothing too crazy going on over here. I don't know if I mentioned that I moved my alocasia corms that were, oh gosh, the reflection from the grow light. There we go. I moved my alocasia corms that I had in water into perlite. And I think that this is a lot better. I decided to put a little like dome. This is just sitting on top to keep some of the humidity in. Not sure what kind of alocasia these are. Uh, either black velvet or fry deck or dragon scale so I'll find out once I get a leaf or two um, everyone's growing so well oh I did want to talk about this actually my monstera albo this is the new leaf that it gave me which is beautiful amazing I love it I love this plant so much but I've noticed that something that happens to me occasionally with variegated plants um, the monstera albo and like my syngonium albo it happens on as well but the variegated part will be a lot smaller. Like look, this half of the leaf is like a full monstera leaf. And then this is just like, it's like, you know, it should, it's like half the size of what it should be. And I'm assuming it has something to do with like not having as much chlorophyll or like, I don't even know, but why? Or maybe it's something to do with the fertilizer that I'm using. We were talking about it in my discord and that was a theory. So if anyone knows about this, like I feel like there's somewhere someone out there who knows what causes this, please leave a comment below if you do or if you've ever experienced this and been able to remedy it somehow. I mean, maybe it just, I happened to underwater this when this leaf was forming or something like that. I'm not really sure. But I see other people with um, variegated plants that have sectoral variegation like this that looks like super even. So I just don't know why my leaf size and shape is not even. But anyways, I love this leaf regardless. It is so pretty. Look at that. This is just the, that like mintiness in there. That's so cool. Absolutely gorgeous. I recently moved my philodendron camposportuanum out of the cabinet and into the bedroom and I am happy to report that it is doing well. Um, it kind of sucks because I think that if I would have left it in the cabinet I would have gotten like pretty mature looking leaves pretty soon and now it might give me a couple of smaller leaves before it starts sizing up again and then it's going to be at the top of the pole and blah blah blah. But there was just no room. I've recently had to move things out of the cabinet and just move things around because I'm just really running out of room in like all... All areas of my home in both cabinets in both rooms like oh what the heck this leaf is like missing that's weird strange shape on that side but all right anyway so now this plant is living in my bedroom so I'm gonna keep an eye on it and see see how the growth is over the next month or two and then on my shelf um Syndapsis exotica popping off I've always had trouble with this plant and I have spoken about that before but since having it under this Soltec light, it has just been growing like a beast. Look at that new leaf there. The only thing is that I really want like the dark leaf color. 
and I feel like it needs to be in lower light for that because in highlight it gives me this like lighter green but it grows so it's like do I want it to like not grow but give me darker foliage I don't really know what the solution is I mean maybe I can move it down like a shelf so it's not right under the light but it's just growing so fast right now and I'm just stoked about that so I've just been leaving it up here I mean it seems to enjoy it my Hoya Valiniana is absolutely taking off. I've spoken about how fast this Hoya grows in the past. I think I had it as like one of my fastest Hoya in my top Hoya video. But yeah, I just cannot believe how much this thing grows. I can't believe I've only had it for like just over a year. So much new growth here at the top, like all those little baby leaves. I did see a peduncle on this too. I'm not sure where it went, but it's on there somewhere. Oh, here's one. So cute. I don't know if that will ever bloom, but we'll we'll see. New leaf coming in on the Billy. This thing has really accelerated its growth as well since I've had it under the light here on this shelf. It's doing really well. Also new leaf on my black velvet alocasia. Ooh, and oh my gosh, this is going to be a long video. I can already tell because I have a lot of new leaves. This is a new leaf on my Alocasia Maharani, and this is really cool because this is actually like getting the texture. Like this one is really juvenile, so it didn't have as much of the texture, but this new leaf, oh my gosh. I am so excited to watch this plant mature. It's just gonna be so cool. So yeah, love that. Thai Constellation is working on another new leaf back here, if you can see that. It's coming from the smaller cutting hair, so it's not going to be massive or anything, but I can't wait to see it. Very exciting. Alocasia cupria working on a new leaf, and it looks like it's going to be a big one. Okay, I had to move the grow light away because it was kind of hard to see, but you guys, my philodendron El Choco Red, which we have been on a journey together. This thing rotted on me. Um, I think it's going to be a happy ending though because now I have three of these plants. I have two babies that are growing and then I have this one which was the top cutting which as you can see is a really big beautiful leaf and then it has this one as well which is kind of damaged. But we have a new leaf coming in you guys. Do you see this right here? Oh my goodness. The other day I noticed that the caterpillar was just looking like really just like not right. It was just... It was like all shrivelly and weird and just getting kind of like crusty so I decided to pull it off to see if anything was under it and this whole entire leaf was under it. So I'm glad I took that off because I feel like it had been on there for so long that I don't know if this leaf was going to be able to bust through it so I'm glad I removed it because now this leaf can just like grow in and it's looking really good and a really decent size for the first leaf after all of that too so that's awesome. Also have my variegated Hoya Bella in here now. I decided to take it out of the greenhouse cabinet just because it was doing poorly. Um, I am treating it for mites. Not sure if it actually has mites or not, but I'm just treating it anyways to see if that helps. It's actually been doing pretty well lately though, so I'm happy about that. Same with my compacta Moana Loa. I also took that out of the cabinet and it's doing well here too. Alocasia Friday, always looking beautiful, amazing. I am just so in awe of this plant. It is so freaking cool. And then down here we have near my, all my clothes on the floor. I am a hot mess lately, you guys. But we have my Philodendron SB Silver, which I recently moved out of the greenhouse cabinet because I'm trying to just find more space. Uh, but I moved this to my bedroom and it seems really happy actually. This leaf like immediately started unfurling. I'm just going to make sure that it stays well watered. I think that this might actually be better for it because these leaves tend to get bleached if they're under too much light. So this is getting kind of like ambient lighting here. I think that it's going to be perfect for it. Yeah, like you can see the bleaching on this leaf too from being right under the grow lights in the cabinet. So I'm feeling really good about this situation here. We have a brand spanking new leaf on my philodendron squamiferum, which has been a pretty slow grower for me. I think it's just mine. Um, it just took a while to get established, but now it seems to be pretty happy. And this one is just like, it's still so shiny and pretty. I love it. And I love the way this plant looks on my shelf. I think that it's so cute. And what else? Just a lot of my baby props here. This is one of the El Choco babies that I was talking about. This leaf was so stuck. It was actually trapped under a root of all things, which was just crazy. So I had to cut the root and free this. I'm surprised actually that I have any leaf left from that because it was really bad. Um, so we're missing a chunk of the leaf, but honestly, I don't even care. It's still a healthy plant and I'm just so excited to have 
a backup El Choco Red. I have two backups now, I guess, but it's one of my like top favorite philodendrons, so I am okay with that. Philodendron Narrow or Jungle Boogie gave me a new leaf right here. This plant didn't grow for me for almost an entire year, and now I got this this leaf right here, and then I got this one. I love this philodendron so much. It inspired me to pick up the philodendron Ring of Fire recently, which I don't even think I've shown on my channel um, yet. Have I? I don't think I have. I think I just shared about it in an Instagram story. But yeah, my local plant shop got some in for $30, I think. So I literally ran there, which thank goodness I did because they sold out like within the hour that I was there. But yeah, I'll show you that once we are in the living room, where I guess we are heading right now. Oh, but, but wait, but wait. My Monstera Subpinata. I'm obsessed with this Monstera. I'm realizing that I like Monsteras. Like, I've always known I like Monsteras, but I mean I like, like, different varieties other than just, like, Deliciosa of Monstera. Like, the Subpinata is so cool, so unique. The Dubia is so cool, so unique. Just really fun to grow. So this was unfortunately right here before and it got burnt by the grow light. So I had to back her up. So now it's over here, but it does have some leaf bleaching. And then this one is the one that like really got burnt. So that was a learning experience, uh, which I'm okay with, but I think it's happy over here. We actually have a new leaf right there that is gonna be coming in. So that's very exciting. These are really fun to watch come in as well. I just love this like fun kind of palm shape. Oh yeah, I was also gonna give a general update about the light in my home as well right now. I said a couple, of, how long ago now? Yeah, like in June, I think, yeah, a couple of months ago that the sun was basically disappearing from my house. If you're new here, I have south facing windows. I was very excited to be getting all the sun, but then it turned out that the sun was too high in the sky and I'm like low ground level. So basically the sun just does not come into my house at all throughout the summer, which was quite a bummer to find out. But now that we are entering the later part of summer, you guys, we are having some sun entering into the house. So I've been noticing sun coming through the windows more. Um, we even have like my rainbows, my rainbow sun catchers that are catching just like the tiniest amount of sun, but that was not happening at all. Oh my gosh, look, it's even down there too. I feel like I'm like the sunlight detective or something, just noticing like any subtle sign that my house is gonna get brighter. But yeah, during the afternoons, the sun comes into this cabinet, like all the way to the edge. And then the sun also hits some of the plants in this cabinet as well. My elbow is getting a ton of sun during the days now. So I'm just feeling really good and relieved that my plants will be getting some more like direct light again. I guess I work kind of well, especially because most of my plants are against the window or have grow lights. Because if the sun was coming scorching in all summer long, then they'd probably get burnt since they are so close to the windows. So it's probably for the best, but even just like for my benefit, I just love having the sun come in. Like during the fall and the spring, the sun comes all the way into this room. Like these plants will even be getting sun once it starts coming in again. So I'm very excited for it. Speaking of these plants, somebody did request an update on my plant wall here, my Wally Grows. I have a whole video setting this up if you are interested. Yes, I have one empty. I just don't even know like, I'm thinking maybe I should put my philodendron micans there. It's like kind of getting bigger now. I don't know. I have not seen any good hanging plants in the stores. So that's why that's still empty. I really need to put something in there, I know. But yeah, it is what it is. Um, anyways, I will show you the plants and tell you how they're doing. So first of all, the furthest one from the window is the philodendron, the green heartleaf philodendron right here. And this one is actually doing really well, which I'm kind of surprised about because it is in pretty low light. But this one has given me the most new growth, I think. Like there's lots of new leaves. They're just little, but there's lots of new leaves. I think that these plants are going to grow a lot more in those shoulder seasons that I was talking about because they're going to be getting more sun. But yeah, it's doing really well. I like never have to water these either. Like I've only watered these like a couple of times since I installed them. So it's really low maintenance. And then next we have my philodendron brazil which hasn't really done too much for me this is a really pretty specimen um it's actually lost a few leaves like settling in i think that there is some new growth back here 
but it hasn't really done too much if I'm honest. I do have to pull like dead leaves off every once in a while, especially on this one. We'll talk about this one next, but um, yeah. So, I mean, they've definitely gone through a big adjustment because I'm sure that they went from like greenhouse conditions into onto this wall, which is not optimal conditions at all, which is why I've just got philodendrons here. But yeah, this one has just not done too much. Not really too much to update about it. It's really not looking that great. But the thing is that they look good from a distance, so it's fine because, you know, people aren't like standing up here on my couch. Like I'm literally standing on my couch to get a close look at these. And then next, yes, my neon Hartley philodendron or whatever, philodendron moonlight or whatever you call it. Um, so this plant has basically been the most unhappy. It kind of threw a fit. I've taken so many dead leaves off of this. I think that this plant needs higher light than what it's getting just because it's so, the color is so light. Oh, is this a new leaf? That's cool. So I'm hoping it'll be fine after it just settles in and goes through this adjustment period. I think it has given me some new leaves, but they've looked like kind of weird like this. And I have treated these all for pests and everything. So there's no pests. I think it's all just like adjustment to living in these conditions. I mean, this side of the plant looks like not bad because that's getting the most light. But yeah, it's, I mean, it doesn't look amazing, but I think that it's going to be fine over time. So, you know, we just have to trust the process here. And then last but not least is my Scandapsis argyreus. Oh, I need to stand on the edge of my couch here. This one actually looks so good. Like, I love this plant. This is for sure the easiest Scandapsis to grow. If you want something that's trailing, that grows quickly, yes, the leaves are smaller than like the Exotica and the other varieties, but honestly, it's so easy going. I had one before, which is why I chose it for this spot because I knew that it was easy going and I knew that it was fast growing. I had one that was trailing super long before. So I just thought that it would be perfect for this wall. And I know I talked about making this just like all philodendron, putting another Brazil here and then putting another green heart leaf here. And I still might do that once I like, I don't know, figure this out more. But for now, I am really enjoying having this syndapsis here. I think that it looks really good. This is honestly like the healthiest one. I don't think it's lost any leaves. It's just living its best life here, really. So I'm super, super happy with that one. Whew, I'm losing steam. I had to crack a soda. Me and my Azevia. Okay, rest of the living room coming up. Okay, so first of all, here on my messy, messy desk is my philodendron McDowell. Now, I did move this. It used to be on the floor over there. Hello, ma'am. <laughs> it used to be on the floor right there. I'm, st I, don't, pff, I don't even know what I'm doing in this area. I like moved those grow lights, thinking maybe I could do without them, but I think I'm gonna have to put them back, <laughs> is what's going on there. But anyways, I moved this guy over here. There's a couple windows nearby. There's like a small one here that some sun is coming through right now. And then there's my south facing behind me. Um, so I think that this is actually going to be an okay spot for him. He's doing so well. This is the newest leaf. It looks absolutely amazing. This is definitely the biggest and the best looking leaf that this plant has given me. So I've just really been admiring that. And it also has a new growth point. So I cannot wait to see the new leaf when it comes in. Okay, so trying to think of what the updates are, the like major things that have been going on in here. Of course, my Amedrium Medium Silver New Leaf, which has been one of, one of the most exciting things for me that has been going on and it's still growing there. Honestly, everyone has been doing pretty well here. My Monstera Standaliana, oh my gosh, it's so backlit. This is like not not great i don't know can you see better from here my monstera sandaliana it has been growing a lot it's kind of wild this is this is a bit of a difficult plant to tame to like get it to attach to, well it's easy to get it to attach to the pole but it just grows in such like a crazy like i don't know it's kind of like stiff to get it to wrap around the pole i don't know it's just you know it just wants to do its own thing <laughs> so i kind of have to wait until i have some length to work with to wrap it around the pole but I do need to do some work to kind of secure that better soon. Um, my philodendron subhastatum has been looking absolutely breathtaking lately. Um, this plant was looking not so hot a little while ago. Not a little while ago. This was quite a while ago. Maybe like at the beginning of the year. 
Um, I completely chopped it up, rooted all the cuttings, and then planted all the cuttings into the pot so I could grow like a fuller plant. And I'm so glad I did that. It looks so amazing. And these are just so stunning in the sunlight because the red from the backs comes through. Like I just, oh, I just love that so much. I wonder if I open my blinds if you'll get a better, a better picture. Like, look at her. She is just so, so pretty. Another really underrated plant. I do want to start talking about this plant more than now that mine is finally, like, growing. And it looks so good because, yeah, I do really, really love it. She also is kind of, like, gripping onto the bamboo stake there. So cute. Um, my Syngonium albo here, which does not stop growing. It is just, like, yeah, such... Such a wild plant. If you want a fast grower, get yourself a Syngonium albo. Honestly, all Syngoniums are pretty fast growing in my experience. I have my Erythrophyllum down here, which I cannot wait to display this front and center somewhere uh, starting September for fall because this is like spooky plant vibes. I'm obsessed with it. Actually goes along with my spooky repot pot there. Is anyone else excited for fall already? Because I am so freaking excited. I can't wait. Um, all of my cactus and succulents that we repotted, they are doing amazing. Nothing really crazy to report, but they all took really well to their new pots and the new substrate and everything. So yeah, really happy with that. I did recently move my rat tail cactus up there into that hanger. I think I might move it back. It was on my windowsill and I think it gets more light. Well, it definitely gets more light because the sun like doesn't really hit up that high like for the majority of the day so I might move it back down because it does have new growth coming in the top there if you can see that anyways moving along um we should check on the growth progress of my fern leaf cactus oh my gosh that little wait 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 you need to focus that new little growth oh my goodness I'm keeping an eye on it because it is just so cute literally obsessed with this plant can't believe I got to cross this off of my wish list this year through a trade. Um, and what else? Painted Lady, which I speak about all the time, doing well. Um, Philodendron Silver Sword, kind of like <laughs> giving me these dinky leaves after the repot. I don't know if it's just mad at me or what. But yeah, this is the size of the leaves I'm getting. It's about the size of my hand compared to the older leaves. I mean, it's to be expected because this plant, again, was probably getting like nice greenhouse conditions and then I moved it to my house. So yeah, that's to be expected. It's just got to adapt to my environment. It's fine. I'm not mad about it. But yeah, she's doing really well. I haven't like lost any leaves or anything since the repot. Also, thank you so much to everyone who left like really kind comments about my little rant about that rude comment that I got on that video. That comment just kind of hurt my feelings, honestly, because like I felt like I worked really hard to successfully repot a plant of this size. Um, so yeah, I went off a little bit, but y'all were in the comments supporting me and I just appreciated that so much. So thank you. Okay, should we move into the Millsville Wide? I think, oh my gosh, I don't even know if I've shown this. I don't even know. I may have shown it by now. My videos are kind of like going up in a weird order because I'm camping so much this month. I'm pre-filming a lot. So maybe you have seen it before, but maybe you haven't. But if you're on my Patreon on the second or third tier, then you would have seen me, you would have seen it because I posted a whole video of setting this new setup up and I am so over the moon about it. I think that this is the coolest upgrade I've ever done. It was the simplest, probably the cheapest. Um, and I feel like it just made such a big impact. Like I love having my plants up higher, having the different levels. It gives it more dimension. It, I can fit more plants in here. It's just amazing. So I've been loving this so far. I just have grids and shelves and I'm using some of my Ikea Scatus accessories to hang plants up here. So yeah, I've been loving it. But um, okay, what's going on in here? Right away, we have a new Anthurium vitrifolium leaf. I'm obsessed. Love this plant so much. Can't wait to see how long that gets. And I think it's so cool to be able to display it like this because before it was just like hidden under the other plants down here. So I love that. My begonia amphioxus bloomed for me, which absolutely blew my mind. This is the first begonia to ever bloom for me. And this is like a new plant to me. 
and it's like a terrarium. I mean, it's not really because these can survive fine in room conditions is what I've heard, but to me, it was considered a more difficult begonia compared to my other ones, so I was so shocked when this was the first one to bloom for me, but I think it's just at, like at the end of blooming, but there are some little flowers. Or have those ones not opened yet? I don't know, but there's a lot of little like flowery things around on this thing. Yeah, this plant is doing so well, so oh my goodness, the new leaves are so cute. Look at that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. And then, speaking of begonia blooms, I just discovered this and I literally gasped. So, my begonia Sinbad, the propagation, which is rooting in water, well rooted actually, this needs to be potted up, but it is blooming as well. <gasps> Do you see that? How cute. I wonder if I can show you better this way. Oh my gosh, that is just like the cutest. I'm obsessed with it. Look at this. This is such a pretty begonia. Like, you guys need to get this. You need to get one of these. I am just so, like, it's so pink and pretty and blooming for me. Oh my gosh, and it roots so easily. I'm going to be potting both of these because I have the mother and the cutting. I'm going to be potting both of them up soon. Um, I've been saying that for so long. I really need to do it. Um, I, I'm going to be potting them up soon. And then I'm going to be transitioning them out of the cabinet, I think, which is going to be... I don't even know how I'm going to do that, but my friend told me that not to just take it out because hers really suffered when she did that, so I'm going to have to, like, figure out how I'm going to do that, but, um, yeah, really obsessed with it, really obsessed. Might even be my favorite begonia right now. Um, Philodendron Bromarx Variegata, one of my favorite philodendrons right now. I love this plant so much, it is so stunning. Um, I've spoken about it, I think, in one of my, like, last favorite videos, but yeah, doing amazing. And my philodendron Florida Beauty gave me some variegation, finally. We have a almost completely half-moon leaf here. There is, like, some, something going on up there, but yeah, I'm just glad to see, like, any variegation on this plant right now. And I'm curious to see the next leaf because the stem looks really variegated on this one. So even if all the others just give me, like, fully variegated or fully... Actually, they're not even coming out fully green. They're all coming out fully variegated. But even if the rest of them give me all fully variegated leaves, at least I have a chance with that, like, one cutting that's in there. Although this looks like... I don't know. We'll see. We'll have to see. But I have not done any cutting or anything like that yet. You guys, well, most of you recommended to just wait it out a little bit longer, so that's what I'm doing. Okay, so here is the ring of fire that I was speaking about that I picked up from my local plant shop. It doesn't look amazing, but it is going to grow into something amazing, so I'm fine with it. I like this variegation here on this leaf. Like, how pretty is that? I'm obsessed with this plant. I'm honestly so excited to watch this grow. Can't wait. I quarantined it. I mean, like, quarantined as best as I could in my tiny house. Um, and I treated it for pests, and then I introduced it to the cabinet. So hopefully all is well, and it can just, like, live its best life, grow a little bit in here. And then, next, this has been a plant that I've been obsessed with because I think that it just looks so cute now that it's growing. And it is my vanilla orchid, my variegated vanilla orchid. Um, so I've started attaching it to the plank. You can see with my little dragonfly clip there. Oh, it just looks so precious. And it actually has rooted in. There is a fuzzy root there. I don't know if the camera will show. But yeah, if you look, if you look by the node there, there's a fuzzy root. And it's rooted into the moss and it's growing and I just love like this is just so cute to me like such a vibe I'm obsessed with it can't wait to watch it grow up the whole thing this is one that I didn't think I was gonna like as much as I do but I really like this like it is just so cute oh my gosh I just noticed this tiny new leaf coming in on my Hoya Quinquinervia <laughs> that's so sweet he is down here um, what else? Tortum is always giving me new leaves. Actually, I need to, like, figure out this plant soon because, as you can see, it's really starting to, like, grow and, like, just get a little bit out of control and kind of, like, leaning that way. So, I need to figure that out, but, you know, I've got a lot of things to figure out right now. Okay, and now for the Mills Tall. I've been keeping it open a crack because it's so humid in here. Look, without it even closed, it's 93%. So let's open her up, take a look-see. 
Okay, so up at the top, um, I don't think there's anything too crazy going on up here. Still trying to get rid of the spider mites on my philodendron mame. But other than that, all of the plants are doing pretty well up here. It's a lot of like seedlings and propagations. My beautiful begonia Magdalene Madsen, which I'm literally obsessed with. Oh, and, oh, I already showed this, though. I already showed this. Oh, my gosh. I think it looks even cooler now, though. My Begonia Dracopelta is blooming back there. So, so cool. I love that. Yeah, everyone in here honestly seems to be loving the humidity. Nothing, like, in particular to update on the top shelf, I don't think. Should I pull this Begonia out, though? I did show it in a different video, but maybe people didn't see that. So, oh, shoot. It seems like the flower is going to, like... Ooh, I don't want to bust it off. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, it is so cute. Oh my goodness. I'm obsessed. I need to take a photo of this after. I'm going to leave it out so that I can take a photo of it. And then down here, we have my Hoya Sunrise, which is about to bloom. Look at that. Look at that padunk. Look at that. And there's actually a second one, too right here which that one's not as ready as the other one but i think it is gonna bloom as well eventually um yeah this is another hoya that has just really been growing well for me actually a lot of my hoya like all my hoya in here have been just like doing really well my hoya caudata sumatra has so many leaves now um my hoya sigillatus in the back there has a ton of leaves now as well um, new leaf on my Hoya Kaimuki. Look at how beautiful that is. I love how dark the new leaves come in and how big they are. Speaking of big leaves, my Hoya Chicken Farm. This is what it is looking like at the moment. These leaves are still really soft and expanding, but I'm so obsessed with that. Definitely one of my favorite, favorite Hoya now. Of course, my trailing ones looking amazing, beautiful, love them. And then down here, I have shown my new philodendron majestic leaf, which is very exciting. It's still hardening off as well, doing great. Um, oh, we have a new varicosum leaf coming in as well. Look at that. So gorgeous. And this has come out so fast. Within like a day, it like fully emerged out of there and started unfurling. So I think it's going to be like open tomorrow and I can't wait to see it. Look at how hairy too. So exciting. Um... Philodendron Serpent's new leaf, which I have shown in a video as well. Um, but what I wanted to do is grab my variegated Adansonii out of here because in one of my videos recently where I was asking for help with this plant, people, multiple people commented that I should take it out of the cabinet because the high humidity is what's causing the leaves to brown so much. So I'm going to take her out and see if that helps. This one is looking, oh, it definitely has some green on it. So thank goodness for that. My camera didn't want to focus there, but that's a sneak, sneak peek. So I'm going to take this out. Um, I don't even know where I'm going to put it. I'm just going to like shove it in somewhere for now. I'll probably have to turn it so it's like more facing the light, you know? I'll turn it like that. That's perfect. It's pretty humid in here anyways. Look at this. 74, oop, the glare. 74% humidity. That's just regular household conditions. Crazy. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else really happening in here. My philodendron gigas is doing so well back there, but I showed that recently too, so I don't think I'm going to bother pulling it out. Um, still waiting for the obliqua to give me a new leaf. Actually, let's see if I can, like, arrange this better now that I took that, mon that Monstera Adansonii out. That gives the Serpens new leaf some more room, I think, actually. This Serpens is, like, really hard to situate. I don't know why that is. It just, like, has, like, a crazy growth pattern, I guess. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for in there. Whew, it is so hot right now. Oh my gosh, look, it is 28.8 degrees right now in this cabinet. That's crazy. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna open my blinds actually. There we go. We have reached 
No, we have not. I have one more plant to show. Okay, don't mind the mess in the background, but we have a new leaf coming in on my alopecia dragon scale. Now this plant gets new leaves occasionally, but it's usually from the smaller plants down here because I have a couple corms. I have like multiple plants growing in here. So it's usually smaller leaves, but it's giving me a new leaf from the main plant, which is very exciting because it has not done that in honestly probably months. This thing grew pretty quickly when I had it inside cabinet conditions, but just in my regular household conditions, it is pretty slow, honestly, to give me like these big, large ones. This is still fresh. It's still going to expand. I can't wait to see what it looks like. I don't think it's going to be as big as these ones that I was getting in the cabinet, but I still think it's going to be nice. It does have some spots. My plants are really getting like these weird spots lately. Anyways, had to show that. Dragon Scale is still doing really well. It looks amazing and just really excited that it's giving me a new leaf. He just sits right there on my makeshift coffee table which is a wicker basket. Okay, now that is it. I hope that you guys enjoyed coming along with me and checking out all of these planty updates. Don't forget to check out Native, the link down below in the description box if you are interested in trying out some of their deodorants. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a comment. I would love to chat with you. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Try